In my last video, I showed you guys how to get Project Lunar up and running. And in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to install Emulation Station so it's also running on your Project Lunar hack device. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. All right guys, so I'm gonna to try to make this relatively short and sweet. The first thing that we need to do is have a USB drive. So I've got my USB drive right here. As you can see, it is completely empty. We're gonna right click on it. We're gonna click format. We're gonna to need to make sure it's in either one of two formatting system styles. We need either FAT32 or XFAT. For the purposes of this, I'm gonna leave it at FAT32. It is a 16 gig drive, which should be more than sufficient. And in terms of the volume label, it does not need to be labeled anything special. We're just gonna leave it the way it is. We'll leave quick format on and we'll start. Uh, we're gonna hit okay. It's gonna go ahead and do its thing. And the formatting is complete. So now we have a USB drive that is ready to go. Next thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that our Genesis Mini is plugged into our PC with the USB cable and it is powered on and currently sitting at the boot menu. That's very important. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, Mino is already set up that way and I'm gonna hit the open game manager button now. Perfect, so here we are. Uh, I've got my USB uh, ready to go. I've got the Project Lunar Game Manager up and running. What we need to do is hit Tools. We need to go to Manage Mods. And then from here, it's gonna check to see if our Classic Console has any mods. Mine obviously has nothing yet. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to actually download our Emulation Station mod. So we need to click on uh, this little button right over here. It says check out available mods at modmyclassic.com. When you click on that, uh, we're going to get a new window which should pop up. Sorry, it was on my other screen here and it's gonna show us any of the available mods. Now, obviously down the road, we may end up with lots of different options and mods and additions. Right now, there's only emulation station available, which is totally fine. We're gonna to click to download. It's gonna ask, where do we want to download? We'll save it right to our desktop. And then that'll only take just a few seconds or so. We're gonna go ahead and minimize this. And I'm gonna drag my emulation station mod over from the other side of my screen. So here it is. What we need to do now is click install new mod and we're gonna go ahead and navigate to that. So that's sitting on my desktop. I just need to find the file. There's the mod file here. We're gonna double click on that and it's going to install the mod. Now what it's going to do is it's going to prompt me to install a USB into that. So as you can see here, it says USB is not mounted and it's a USB mod. So what we need to do is we need to pop our USB drive that we just formatted into the front second USB port of our Genesis mini console. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to hit OK. And it's now going to look for that USB drive. So now it's going to go ahead and restart the console. It's identified, hey, we found the USB drive. That's perfect. We're gonna go ahead and restart the console and it's going to install the mod. There's not really a whole lot that we have to do at this point. We're just gonna go ahead and let it finish and I'm just gonna fast forward through this process. Okay, so now that we're back, nothing's been installed. What you're going to notice though, if I close this, everything has changed. So what it's done is it's transferred the mod to the uh, USB drive and it has allowed the USB drive to act as a storage device. So that's why you see over here, we've got 14 gigs of 14 of free space. So again, we're gonna go back to tools. We're gonna go to manage mods. We're going to install a new mod. We're going to reselect emulation station. And now it's going to go ahead and start installing that mod. So now we get a warning that says removing USB with the system connected is not recommended and can provoke loss of data. Initiating shutdown request to prevent data corruption. We're gonna go ahead and hit okay. And now as you can see, it's kind of resynced itself and we do have emulation station version 2.9 in our mod manager. So that means it is now fully functional on the USB drive. If we were to go over to emulation station, we should be able to load it up right now from the boot menu. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit close. And that's pretty much all that we needed to do with the actual game manager. Now, of course, we have to load games onto our USB stick, but what we need to do is we need to turn on and launch emulation station first in order to create the subfolders that we need for all of our ROMs. So we're gonna go ahead and switch over to the uh, Genesis Mini now and take a look at that. So here we are back on our boot menu. We're gonna slide over to the emulation station section and we're going to go ahead and hit the A button. 
So the first thing that we're gonna see is that we can't find any systems. Check that your paths are correct in the systems configuration file and your game directory has at least one game with the correct extension. So at this point, there's not much that we can do because our controller isn't mapped, but all we need to do is turn off our console and turn it back on. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Perfect, so now that we're back on the boot menu, all that's left for us to do is to pop our USB drive out of our console and to plug that into our computer so that way we can start loading up some games. So we're gonna go ahead and switch back over to our computer. All right, so now that we're back on our computer one more time, we're gonna go ahead and pop that USB drive into our computer and it's going to open up and it's now going to have a bunch of files and folders inside of it. So this is actually what it looks like now. So as you can see, we've got a Mega Drive saves folder, we've got a Project Lunar folder, and we've got a swap folder. What we need to do is double click on the Project Lunar folder. And in here, we've got all of the things that we need. In terms of loading our ROMs, they're gonna go into this folder. So once you click on this folder, it's pre-populated all of the available folders that we're gonna need for Emulation Station. If you want to load up Sega 32X games, they'll go right into this folder here. If you want to put in uh, Game Boy Color games, they're gonna go into that folder, uh, the GBC folder right over here. This will look very familiar with anybody who's done any Raspberry Pi work in the past, or if you're familiar with uh, Emulation Station as a whole. So all you need to do is find the correct folder and that's where you actually are gonna place all of your games. Uh, the next thing that we're going to need to do as well is we need to load up any of the cores that we want associated with those games. So for example, if you want to play SNES, we're going to need to find the SNES core and we're going to need to load that up into the cores folder. So if you double click on RetroArch and then there is a cores folder, we need to double click on that and we need to load all of our cores in here. So I'll leave some links down below where you guys can go ahead and download all the cores. So I actually have all of the cores that I need. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab everything. I'm gonna drag it over into that folder. It's gonna transfer over. It'll just take a minute or so. And when that's done, then I'm gonna load up a few games as well. So again, I'll leave links where you guys can access these cores. Uh, and then in terms of the games, obviously I can't tell you guys where to get them. Hopefully you guys are backing up your own games, uh, but if you need them, you're gonna have to find them on your own. So I'm gonna go ahead and just for the sake of this video, I'm gonna throw in a few Genesis games. Great, so I've got my Genesis games right over here, uh, just to make it simple. So we're gonna need to find our Genesis folder, which is right here. And then I'm just gonna grab a few games, let's say maybe 27 games and we'll throw them in there. It's gonna take just a second to transfer in. We can go ahead and close that. And now we have the games that we want for Emulation Station to be there. And all we need to do is take our USB drive now and pop it into our uh, Genesis Classic again, and we're gonna turn it on. So one last time, we're gonna switch back over to the Sega Genesis Classic console. All right, so we are back on the boot menu. As you can see, Emulation Station is right over here. We're gonna go ahead and hit the A button to select on Emulation Station. Now it's gonna go ahead and load it up and it's gonna say, hey, we've got a gamepad detected. We need you to map those buttons. So if you guys want to use a PS4 controller, or an Xbox 360 controller, your Genesis controller, whatever it happens to be, you can now do that here. Now I'm currently using the Retrobit 8 button Genesis controller. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit A. It's gonna say USB gamepad. And now we just need to press everything in there. So D-pad up down, left, right. My start button is gonna be my start button. My select button, I'm gonna use the mode button. And then in terms of my A, B, X, Y, for the button A, you're actually gonna press the C button on your Genesis controller. For the B button, it's going to in fact be the B button. And for the X button, it's going to be the Y button. For the Y button, we're going to select the A button on the controller. For your left and right shoulder buttons, they'll actually be your L button and your R button on your shoulder buttons on the controller, so left and right. And then for the left trigger and right trigger, we can actually use left trigger will be X, right trigger will be Z. And then in terms of the thumbsticks, we're not using it, so we're just gonna go ahead and press and hold the button to skip through all of these items here. And then for the hotkey enable, we are going to select our mode button one more time. So it's going to say, are we good with this? We're gonna go ahead and hit the A button or our mapped A button, which will be our C button physically on the controller. 
And as you can see, we are now an emulation station. We've got 27 games available and we've got this really awesome Genesis theme that's pre-installed as well. So I'm going to go ahead and hit A here. And as you can see, all our games are here. I'm going to go ahead and select one of them. Let's do uh, Adventures of Batman and Robin. We're going to hit A. It's going to load up right away, right within RetroArch. And we're just going to see if we can skip right on into the game. And there you guys go. We've got our game running totally fine. Everything seems to run perfectly fine on it. Emulation feels good. And of course, because this is essentially running through RetroArch, you can do whatever you want in terms of the... Um, the styles you guys can add overlays you guys can add uh crt filters you can add whatever you want onto it so it is actually pretty nifty and this is a, a good system so that way you guys can play whatever other games you want on the uh, genesis mini classic console as well so that's actually really cool we're going to go ahead and back on out of here and here we are so that's pretty much it guys all we're going to do if we want to get back to the main menu is we're going to press the b button we're going to press the start button and we're going to go to quit. We're going to quit emulation station and it's going to jump us right on back to the boot menu right where we started. But that's all I've got for you for this video. That is how you get emulation station up and running on your Project Lunar build. So if you guys haven't got Project Lunar installed, there'll be a link in the description down below to my installation video for that. Um, but other than that, that's all I've got. If you have any questions, leave a comment in the comment section down below and I will talk to you guys again real soon.